Okay, here you can see that I've been began preparing some heat inserts for these parts. Um, one thing that I'll just give in terms of tips is that you want to make them flush and insert them in straight and flat. And you can even go in after you insert them and just check them with the screw just to make sure that you're getting a nice straight position. And if they are a little off, you can adjust them with the tip of the iron. And then when you do insert your heat insert, but you're gonna you're gonna use the uh, the smaller end, and that's gonna go in the hole, and just kind of sit in there like that. And once you set them in there, you can just push them down real easily. And this is one of the original V two point four parts. So it's if you're on the R two, yours are gonna look a little different, but it's really the same idea and process. I recommend getting your heat your soldering iron with your tip. Like I've got here this is a really good way to go this is a hacko uh, I forget the model number but it's a hacko soldering iron with a hacko heat insert compatible tip and it works really well I heat my soldering iron to around 330 C um, and that seems to be a good temperature if you notice any bubbling on your edges you're probably running a little too hot mine looked pretty good Okay, and I'm just going to show like a side view here so you can see I really got them pretty flush. If anything, uh, you can even go a little bit more recessed. If you have any that are sticking out a little bit, just hit them. Maybe tuck them in a little bit because you really don't want anything popping out above that plastic. When you're building the Z drives, one thing that I recommend is laying everything in before you um, tighten things up so I went ahead and put my my bearing my GT <coughs> GT2 20T 9 millimeter pulley two one two uh, one millimeter um, shim rings another bearing another two shim rings this large uh, pulley here and then another bearing so that's how it's specified in the directions then, then what you're going to want to do is push everything um, so set these in place, all three of these bearings, and then kind of push everything in place here. And then loosen up these, take the grub screws out, and make sure that you have the flat side of the shaft where you can um, bite in from the top. And I'm going to go ahead and Loctite that now. Just put some good amount of Loctite on there. You definitely don't want to do this part without Loctite, because if these slip, you're going to have a, ha a bad time. And then you just go in there and tighten it down real good. And make sure when you're doing that, that you, like I said, you kind of push everything in to the, to the center. So you should have a little bit of a gap here and a little bit of a gap here with this bearing. And then just repeat that for this larger pulley. And there's actually two grub screws, but the ones you want to do first are these, these ones that are going to hit the, the flat of the shaft. Those are going to have the most grip. So push that all the way in, get a little Loctite on it, just move it over a little bit. And then just sink that grub screw real good. All right, and then you can just finish up the other two grub screws. And here's one of the Z drives, belt drive assemblies. Got the belt on here, got the bearings aligned, got everything pushed to the center stack. And I'm pretty much ready to put the screws on. Okay, when you're doing the pan for the foot, I found it easiest to hold it to the side and then put the M38s in. Um, there's also an M5 nut in here. And you're going to then put the M5 screw and the foot into it. And you can probably use either style foot. This is the 2.4 style. These are more the R2 style. But I'm going to go ahead and use the originals. And to put the foot in, I'm just going to take my driver insert it into the hole with the M5 and it should just snug right into place and there we go it's pretty tight you don't want it moving around so you might want to put a little extra torque on it okay that looks pretty good you're just going to need to repeat that for all of the other uh, assemblies when you're doing these motor mounts make sure that your back plate is here relative to your wires so that's how that should be connected and that should be the case for um for all these 
And before you proceed, you may want to just double check all your wires should be facing out the sides with the long piece on the motor mount. And that's how they should look. All right, as you can see here, I've kind of got these laid out. I haven't secured them down yet, but for each corner, you're going to have this piece here in the corner with the foot, and then you're going to have the motor. And the motor is going to connect to that belt with this pulley. I have not even tightened down this pulley yet. I'm going to wait until I get this piece on to align it. In order to do this part, you're going to need to put two of the Roland uh, M5 T-nuts here and two here. And this is how you want your T-nuts to look uh, based on the orientation that's in the new manual. And here I am just sinking these M5 40s. They're pretty long. And before you sink them all the way in, make sure that you're flush on these the corner here. You don't want any of this extrusion um, coming out too far. Before I do the motor mount, I just want to show how this piece kind of fits in. So this is, this is how we're going to install it. And then after we install it and we get everything aligned, we're going to close the tension. And that just basically slides it over a little bit. Okay, and before I set this uh, into place, I want to make sure my um, pulley is aligned. And you can do that by lining it up with this and this. And then you want to tighten down or adjust, if you've already tightened them, adjust this so that it's on the shaft of the flat, the flat part of the shaft. So I've got that pretty much where I want it, so I'm going to go ahead and Loctite that. Don't forget to use lock, the blue Loctite, but this is the best way to make sure that you, you know that everything's going to be aligned with the belts. And just here's another view from the top side of what I'm talking about. So you want the pulley on the motor shaft to align with the pulley and the foot assembly. Okay, and, and to install this part here, make sure you've got your T-nuts aligned to the holes, and you're going to slip, like I just did, slip that belt over. And then I'm going to do the outside first. doesn't really matter what order, but it's a little bit easier this way to hold it in place. So you're going to get that uh, M5, <clears throat> I think it's a 10 millimeter, it might be 8, yeah, it's a, let's see what it is. Yeah, M5 by 10. You're going to go ahead and get that in there. Oops, got to get the right driver. Okay, and when you're um, doing this, make sure you get the right belt tensioner. If you get the wrong one, you'll know because when you try to close it, it'll hit this. You want it to line up like this. So after you slide this first screw in, um, you're going to insert this belt tensioner piece like so. And then we're going to just put this screw in here and then just leave it open for now and don't don't lock it down super tight just make sure it's biting so you want this to be moving movable and then we're just going to pull that and then it should tighten into place just like such and then now we can go ahead and lock these down make sure it's nice and straight and parallel to the extrusion and you also want to double check that you're aligned doesn't hurt to just rotate it Looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it down. All right, and that's pretty much it. We just have to repeat that process for all four corners, or the remaining three corners. 